Hello, my name is Amanpreet Kant. I'm the Regulatory Affairs Team Lead at IFRI. Thank you for joining me today. Does outsourcing turnaround time or time spent on validation and gateway errors make it difficult to get time-critical updates approved as quickly as you'd like? AFRL Professional is a tool you can use to augment your current approach and get these time-critical submissions successfully to the FDA in record time. In this video, I'll use AFRL, our Microsoft Word plugin tool, to quickly update, validate, and publish a compliant SPL. I'll walk you through a major label revision that includes importing your existing label so you can edit it as a Word document, revising the narrative text, product, and labeler data, validating for compliance as we go using AFRL's integrated validation, and finally, publishing the updated label for submission. As a user of AFRL, you'll have immediate access to IFRI's team of regulatory specialists for any labeling guidance that you might need during the process. Okay, let's get started. Since AFRL is a Word plugin, we'll begin in Microsoft Word. I'm going to import an already existing SPL into AFRL. I'll locate the SPL and select it for import. As it imports, all the content and behind the scenes data elements are transferring from the XML file into the AFRL DOCX file. Now that the SPL is opened with A4L, it's time to author. But before we get into our scenario, I want to point out that along with the regular Word tabs, there is an additional tab available, the A4L tab. It has all our I4I custom buttons necessary for SPL authoring. In addition, you can also use many regular Word functions, which makes editing your SPL just like editing any other document. For example, on the Home tab, you can use bold, italic, underline, superscript, and subscript, just to name a few. On the Insert tab, you can insert tables and images, etc. And on the Review tab, you can use track changes and comments. However, not everything is permitted by the FDA schema rules, and AFRL's validation helps us to keep a check on unwanted formatting, such as different font color, or highlights, or strike through, etc. Additionally, when publishing, AFRL's integrated validation also strips out this unwanted formatting. In the full prescribing information, we find each individual section of the label. Each section has two parts, a heading and a body. Headings also have the loin coding in the background. So when we publish to the SPL format, it will retain all these codes in the XML file. You'll also notice these gray boxes surrounding each section. These are Microsoft Word's content controls. Employing content controls allows AFRL to structure your content with XML tags as per the FDA's requirements. So you don't need to worry about tagging your document with XML as it's all handled by AFRL in the background. Okay, let's dive into our scenario. We'll use an example where a new strength must be added in our SPL. We can see that there's already one strength present here. So we can copy the existing paragraph Now, we'll edit the text for the new strength. The new strength that we are adding is 50 milligram tablets and the characteristics are also going to be updated. And we'll need to change the NDC codes product segment. 
And then we can go ahead and make these changes throughout the document where we need to reference this newly inserted strength. For this new strength, we are also going to add a new principal display panel section, which will require a new image. Images can be inserted in various ways and in various formats. You can use the insert tab or you can directly copy paste an image from another word file or the file explorer pane. In this scenario, I'm going to insert it from the insert tab. When you insert an image this way, April will ask for the image alt text. We know that the FDA requires images to have image alternative text for use when the image is not available on screen and for screen readers. I'm going to enter a description about our new image and click OK. If we later need to access and edit an image's alternative text, April makes this easy as it's just a click away with the image alt text button on the April tab. With updates to our narrative text done, we now need to update the associated metadata. Your metadata is your product data elements and labeler and manufacturing information. In A4L, metadata is entered and edited in dialogues accessed from the SPL dropdown on the A4L tab. We first need to update strength and NDC codes in our product data, so we'll select product data elements. In the Edit Product Data Elements dialog, we can easily enter our data in the text fields or select values from the FDA's controlled vocabulary lists. I just want to point out that each item in a drop down list is associated with a specific code, but all of this is handled by AFRL in the background. We simply need to select an item from the drop down menu or complete the text box. In our scenario, we need to add a new table for the new strength. There are two ways to add another product table. The first way is with the Add Product button to add a new blank table. The second way is with the Copy Product button to make a copy of the existing product table. Since we know that the characteristics are very similar to the previous strength, we'll use A4L's copy product feature to quickly duplicate our first table so we won't have to re-enter all our data again manually. Now, all we need to edit in the new table are the product data elements that have changed with our new strength. I'll go ahead and update the active ingredient strength, changing the strength quantity from 25 to 50. I'll also update the NDC codes in our packaging. And I'll update the imprint text for our product characteristics as well. Once we are done making these updates, we can immediately validate the product data elements dialog to ensure that we have all the mandatory information present. Let's say, for example, that we're missing the generic name in one of the tables which the FDA requires. When we run the validation for this dialog, the validation catches the rule violation that the generic name field cannot be left blank as it is mandatory. The dialog validation also puts a red outline around the text field in the dialog to help us quickly locate the error. So once we fill in that data, we can rerun the validation to ensure everything's passed. Now I'll save this information. Next, we'll update the labeler and manufacturing dialog. Here, we'll update the effective date to today's date. Next, the version number also needs to be incremented to the next major version update. We'll also link our newly added product to the business operation. And like in the product data elements dialog, we'll run the validation for the labeler and manufacturing dialog to ensure that we have filled in all the mandatory information. 
we have. So we'll click save and close the dialog. We'll then save the document as well. So far, we've edited the native content and made changes in the metadata. Let's use April's preview feature to see how our label looks in the FDA style sheet. To do this, click the preview button in the April ribbon. While you can see a preview anytime while authoring, we definitely recommend previewing your label before you publish as it can help you spot those anomalies that don't break FDA rules, but which are not what you intended such as the true size of your images. And currently, the Microsoft Edge browser does not render the preview of SPLs correctly. Therefore, clicking the ellipses and selecting Reload in, in Internet Explorer mode will display it correctly in the FDA style sheet view. We've finished editing both the native text and metadata for our new strength, but before we publish our document for submission, we can take advantage of AFRL's comprehensive integrated validation to ensure that we meet FDA's regulatory requirements and validation checks. AFRL also runs the integrated validation automatically when you publish your SPL. Nonetheless, running validation during the authoring process can be a real time saver as you'll be aware in advance of any missing content or errors. The overall validation in AFRL gives you two reports. First is the AFRL's Redness Report. It provides warnings about high level issues, such as where there is incomplete information or if any unsupported word features have been used. Some warnings are automatically fixed by AFRL during publish. For example, if unsupported text highlights or font colors are present in the document, AFRL's redness report flags the violations as warnings and removes the formatting automatically in the published file. The second report is the validation report. The validation report tests the SPL against rules from the FDA's implementation guide to ensure it is compliant. This report must be passed for the SPL to be accepted by the FDA. If any errors are received on this report, they must be fixed manually in the document before publishing can proceed. Another useful feature of this report is that it provides you with the report date and the document set ID, root ID, version number, and document type. So after running the validation, we are now going to publish. With this one document in A4L, we can publish our SPL to several different types of output files. This includes publishing to Word or PDF formats. If our document had a medication guide, the medication guide could be published to a Word, PDF, or HTML format. However, we want to create a submission file, so we'll choose FDA SPL, which will create the necessary XML file package for us. We'll name our SPL package. This can be customized based on your internal naming conventions. When asked if this is the first version of this label to be sent to the FDA, we'll click no. AFRL then requests the last version, so We'll select the version that we imported earlier in the video. And as I said earlier, it's going to rerun the validation during the publishing process. AFRL also compares the two documents and produces the changed sections report, making sure the set IDs match and noting the sections that were updated and upgrading the section IDs for those sections in the process and we'll continue with the publishing process. At the published location, AFRL has created a zip file for utility purposes and a folder containing our SPL submission files. These files include an XML file and the associated JPEG images. Note, 
Earlier in the video, I said you can insert images of any format such as JPEG, PNG, or even PDF. The FDA will only accept the JPEG formatted images. One of the time-saving features of A4L is that it will automatically convert non-JPEG images into the JPEG format. We'll look at our final result in the browser with the FDA style sheet view. Here in the house applied section, we have the original 25 mg strength paragraph and the newly added 50 mg strength paragraph as well. The newly added image is found in the principal display panel. Below that, the metadata is found in separate tables. One of them is the new table for 50 mg strength. And at the bottom of the page, if we hover our mouse over the revised date, we can quickly find the document ID, set ID, version number, and the effective time. And that brings us to the end of our video. In this short time, our time critical major update is fully compliant and ready to submit. Thank you for watching.